Madam Chair, allow me to, be, to begin my address by conveying warm greetings and felicitations for my country, Lesotho. It is always an honor and a privilege for me and my delegation to be part of this august uh, gathering. Madam Chair, Lesotho, like most countries, experiences disasters that are climate-related, such as drought, strong winds, snow, early frost, and most recently floods due to heavy rains. The two most common effects of these disasters are damage to houses and property. More than 80% of houses in Lesotho are poorly constructed and therefore are easily blown away during disasters. Yet only a percentage of these houses are reconstructed during, due to limited financing. This results in a backlog of reconstruction that accumulates over the years, thus making it impossible to respond effectively. The second is damage to crops and livestock. Frequent disasters result in destruction to crops and death of large numbers of livestock, as well as decrease in the quality of life of communities. The overall effect is that people's livelihoods and income are destroyed every year. All this is happening in a country classified as amongst the least developed, whose HIV and AIDS prevalence is around 23% and against the background of the global economic downturn. Madam Chair, most recently, around December and January 2011, Lesotho experienced devastating heavy rains, causing extensive destruction to road infrastructure, bridges, houses, and large tracts of cultivated land through the country. In response to this disaster, Lesotho has conducted a post-disaster needs assessment to determine the extent of damage and losses, as well as the reconstruction and recovery needs. <clears throat> Total damages and losses are estimated at 66 million uh, US dollars. The cost of reconstruction and recovery is estimated at 93 million US dollars. This disaster needs assessment has also found that in addition to damages across the productive social and infrastructure sectors, the main impacts have been to agriculture production, which has been badly affected. This is expected to lead to significant food insecurity in the country. The overall effect on the economy is expected to be an increase in the level of vulnerability, both transitory and chronic. Madam Chair, the reality in Lesotho of frequent disasters due to a combination of erratic climate variability has taught us that hazards will continue to happen but this will not necessarily result in disasters if there is a fundamental shift in our development and economic planning. We should adopt risk reduction as a key national development paradigm shift. We should be more efficient in the dissemination of early warning information at all levels. Changing people's mindset to DRR is not easy. However, we are creating a conducive environment for disaster risk reduction to happen in Lesotho. And to that end, we are revising the legal framework for DRR and disc res uh, disaster risk management structures at all levels. A draft DRR policy is ready for approval by government, and we are in the process of integrating DRR into the school curriculum. We are developing a medium-term development plan mainstreaming DRR as an overarching issue. We are working with local government structures to enforce DRR into the planning and construction of settlement areas. Training on community-owned vulnerability assessment and capacity analysis are being carried out throughout the country. However, Lesotho still faces a number of challenges in the implementation of the Hyogo framework, and these are financial resources to implement DRR activities at national and at all levels. Expertise to mainstream and integrate DRR into development programming. And lastly, expertise to strengthen early warning and to implement community-based early warning systems, which are key to disaster prevention and mitigation. Madam Chair, I thank you for giving me this opportunity. <laughs>